I am Christy Overton Johnson, and today I celebrate the life and the memory of one of my dearest friends, Joanne Godley. Yesterday, October 24th, around 11.30, she went to be with her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And when I received the news, um, of course, I was broken at heart because she was one of my best friends. But I also celebrated her homecoming because... Just a few weeks ago when I was there visiting her in North Carolina, as she laid on her bed, we were singing a song together about soon and very soon I am going to see the king. And all of a sudden she started singing by herself. She said, no more dying, Lord. I am going to see the king. No more dying, Lord. I am going to see the king. No more dying, Lord. I am going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm going to see the King. Joanne, for the last four or five years, has uh, had a journey with cancer. I don't say battle it because um, that sounds like something where the cancer's winning and it was never winning. When the devil picked on Joanne Godley, he picked on the wrong girl because never once did Joanne waver in her faith. And she was the most inspirational person that I have ever met in my life. My journey with Joanne began uh, many years ago when uh, my nanny, Louise Overton, was very sick. And Joanne was the full-time nurse that came and she stayed by my grandmother's side. And I met Joanne as I would come in for my visits from Florida. And I would sit by my nanny's bedside and visit with her. But usually would end up visiting with Joanne a little more because... We just hit it off right at the beginning because of our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we just would talk a little bit more each time. And we developed, through my grandmother's um, sickness, we developed a friendship that has lasted, um, it will last forever. And so I am just so grateful for the opportunity to have known Joanne. I call her my angel because she is the one who encourages me all the time. She always says that I bless her, but she's the one and I don't know that she ever fully realized what a blessing she was to me to be able to call her my friend and to be able to call and just bear my soul of the things that I struggle with or the things that I knew the Lord was leading me to do but was often too hard to face. But through her journey with cancer, I was inspired. I was inspired to give thanks in the little things. I remember calling Joanne and she would be celebrating the fact that she felt well enough to scrub her toilet that day. Or she felt well enough to clean her kitchen. And there I had been complaining throughout the day of having to wash clothes and go to the grocery store when she was happy just to be out of the bed and walking into the bathroom and being able to get on her hands and knees and just scrub the floors. And what a reminder it was every time I called her when I was having a bad day, I wanted to call Joe because I knew that I would be lifted up. Joe never, ever complained. It was the most amazing um, thing that I ever saw for someone to go through something so difficult. And I looked at her one day and I saw how the enemy had stolen her breast through breast cancer and her hips through bone cancer. And he was trying to attack her brain with brain cancer. And she'd lost her hair and lost her teeth. He stripped her of everything that a woman would say would make her beautiful, but yet she was beautiful. She was the most beautiful person that I ever knew. She radiated Jesus every single day. When I read 2 Timothy 4, I love the passage that says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. As to what remains, there is laid up for me the victor's crown of righteousness. That the Lord himself, the righteous judge, will award to me and recompense me on that great day. And not to me only, but also to all those who have loved and yearned for and welcomed his return. Joanne fought the fight. She ran the race like no one I had ever seen. And she's receiving the victor's crown. I've received a lot of trophies in my day through water skiing, but the one I have just longed to hear the most is, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful. Now come and share in your master's happiness and, and all that he has, and that's what Joanne is getting to do 
the moment that she departed from this earth, she was present with the Lord Jesus Christ. And I can see her right now. My children and I were talking about it last night. That she was running and dancing and leaping and praising God. She told me for years and years I would ask her to go flying with me. Come see me in Florida. And she said, oh Lord, have mercy. I am not letting my feet touch, leave the ground. And I told her when she gets to heaven, she's going to have to fly for me. And I also told her that she's going to have to ski on the Crystal Sea. So um, I know right now that Joanne is flying around saying, why didn't I fly when I was down there? And she's skiing away with Jesus. And I'm a little bit jealous on that glassy, calm sea. But I know that she's leaping and praising him. I feel like she was a lot like Paul, not knowing whether she should stay here. Because what she told me, she said, Christy, I want to live so that I can tell people about my Jesus. That was her life goal, was to tell people about her Jesus. She didn't care about health. She didn't care about wealth. She didn't care about having fancy cars. She just wanted her basic needs met so that she could proclaim the gospel. And she proclaimed it everywhere she went. She proclaimed it in waiting rooms, during cancer treatments. She proclaimed it on the front porch. She proclaimed it on the phone every morning, 6 a.m., no matter what she felt like. She was on a prayer chain with ladies across the country praying for me and praying for you. Praying that somebody would know the Lord Jesus Christ. And I can't help but think how many times I've been sick and said, Lord, help me to feel better. I just want to feel better. I want to be able to get outside. I want to be able to do things. Not Joe. She wanted to feel better so she could tell more people about Jesus. She challenges me. She still challenges me. In Hebrews 11, it says, it lists all these people who were heroes of faith. People, God said, these are my heroes. Why? Because they had faith. If this was written today, Joanne's name would be there. You know what I love it says about Abel? It says that his life continues to speak today, even though he's dead, because of his faith. And that's Joanne's life. She may be departed from this earth, but she will proclaim Jesus as long as this earth remains because she left a legacy. She left a legacy of faith. She left a legacy in my heart. And as long as I have breath, I will proclaim the good works of Jesus Christ. And I will say, this is what he did for my friend Joanne. Now, a lot of people can look at her situation and say, what did he do for her? She had cancer and she died. Well, let me share something with you. In Psalms 118, 17, God gave me this verse for Job about six months ago. It says, I shall not die but live and shall declare the works and recount the illustrious acts of the Lord. When I saw that verse, the Lord spoke her name into my heart and I thought to myself, she's not going to die. He's going to heal her. And she's going to be running around Greenville, North Carolina and Grimeswood and she's going to be proclaiming the works of Jesus because that's what this, this verse says. Well, this morning the Lord reminded me of that verse and I thought, well, Lord, she died. She died. But then I thought about her life. The doctors told her about five years ago, you're going to die. She had stage four cancer three years ago. You're going to die. But you know what Joanne said? She said, I shall not die but live. This was her life verse. She fought the good fight. She finished the race well all the way to the end which was just the beginning. But she also, this was what she declared every day, I shall not die but live. And I shall declare the works and recount the illustrious acts of the Lord. That was what she did every day. When the doctor said, you're dying, when the doctor said, this is the end, many years ago, she said, I shall not die, but I will lay here, I will stand here, I will slump over here, however positioned she was, and I will declare the illustrious works of my Lord. I can't help but think how many people give up on life as soon as they get a doctor's report, as soon as a friend disappoints them or they get mad at a relative, and life stops. Their anger takes control. Their circumstances take control. Their financial condition takes control. Their mind takes control and their emotions take control. Not Joanne. She said, none of those things are going to control me. I shall not die. You see, God said there is appointed a time for man to die. 
there is a point and a time for me to die. Well, the doctors may tell you it's time to die right now. But that's not going to happen until the Lord says it. So from now until then, live. Live. Lay aside worry. Joanne didn't worry about where the money was going to come from for them to pay their rent or to buy toilet paper, or to do whatever it is that they needed. She trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ. She didn't curl up and die when they said, you have stage four cancer. She said, you know what? My Lord told me. He gave her these words in a waiting room. A lady came up to her and said, I just feel like I'm supposed to tell you this. She didn't know this lady. This was at her first doctor's appointment for cancer, first treatment. This lady came up to her out of the blue and said, The Lord says that I will see you to the other side. And that is the word that she clung to her whole life. She considered her God faithful. She considered her God true to his word and his promise. And she chose not to die, not to let her emotions put her in the grave early, not to lay there and waste life because she knew how precious life was. And I encourage you today, to live, live the abundant life God has given you. Quit worrying about what could happen, what may happen, what has happened, and step into the abundant life that God has for you. Did God see her to the other side? You know, we took that promise, and Joanne and I were talking about that. We're like, man, he's going to bring you through this. I saw this verse. You're going to live. But now I look, and she will live forever. So was God not faithful? Oh, he was faithful. Yesterday, I was in the boat. After I got the news, I was just very distraught, and I said, you know, i got to get out on the lake. And I was out there by the water. That's where I go meet the Je with Jesus every day. And I, I said, Lord, I know she's with you. And I wanted a sign. And, and you know, an unbelieving nation asks for signs, but I just... I needed that comfort. And so my kids came out. We were out in the boat, and my son looks up in this beautiful sky. He goes, Mom, look at the rainbow. And I looked up, and next to the sun was this small little rainbow just tucked up in the sky, like a little half moon. It didn't reach and span across. We were having no rain. There was barely any clouds up there at that time. But there was a little rainbow. And God reminded me right then of his promise to see her to the other side. You know, he told um, the disciples in Luke 8, he said, get into the boat, we're going to the other side. And there was a terrible storm. But at the word of Jesus, he spoke to that storm, and that storm ended, and it says there was a great calm. There was great peace. And that's what happened yesterday, October 24th, at about 11.30. God spoke to that storm of cancer. And he took Joanne Godley safely to the other side. And she's in heaven right now. She's left a legacy of godliness. Well, a fitting name, Joanne Godley. But she's also left a heart's desire with me. And she said, Christy, I just want people to know about my Jesus. I want my family to know about my Jesus. I want people I know to lay aside anger and frustration and worries of this world and the lure of this world and just know my Jesus. And I promise you, Joe, as long as I have breath, I will tell people about your Jesus, about my Jesus. And I love you, Joe, and I will miss you here, but I look forward to the day when we will meet standing face to face in front of our Savior. And we will declare the wondrous acts of our Lord Jesus. Say hello to my nanny up there and the granddaddy Charlie. I know you're happy to be with your brother and other loved ones that you have lost while you were here on earth, but you have found them now. And I know your sisters and your brother and your children and your mother and all your grandkids look forward to seeing you face to face one day soon. And through Jesus Christ, we're going to have an incredible reunion. I love you.